the whole world is talking about it again because it is time we've seen the ads. Shenyun Performing Arts is on tour. And as you can see, we have two very special guests this morning, principal dancer Jesse Browdy, who found his calling on stage. And we have his dad, Levi Browdy, who then found his calling in a new career as well because of Jesse. And we're going to dive into that a little bit later. Welcome, first of all, and I know it must be a lot of anxiety and nerves to send your sons away for school, And but I have to say it seems like it has worked out pretty well for you two because you both are now involved with Shinin Performing Arts. So um, to start though, I want to back up and start from the very beginning with Jesse, of course, because you grew up in the U.S., you were identifying with American culture, you played baseball. What was that kind of path that you took that you suddenly got interested in traditional Chinese uh, dance? Um, okay, so my parents found a school uh, located in Middletown, New York, that also taught the, the same kind of dance form as uh, what Shen Yun was doing on stage. And at the time, I had a lot of, uh, f I had a couple friends in the dance program. And so it was more peer pressure that, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, it, was, it was because of more of peer pressure that I chose to enroll in the dance program because I kind of just wanted to be with my friends. Um, the reason I kept going with dance was kind of the brotherhood that kind mm -hmm. of, I, I noticed that the dancers seemed a bit closer with each other than like the other programs of that school, like the music department or like the academic yeah. department. So, okay, so you said it is Levi, your dad, who kind of went on to look for a private school. So mm. that brings me to you. Why, why were you trying to get him out of the public school system in the first place? I mean, I, I saw, we're, first of all, we were in a, what is supposedly a, a blue ribbon school district in New Jersey. It was a very good school district. But there is, I think, a pervasive problem in education that I was seeing. There was primarily uh, two things I would point out to. One is the combination of social media and smartphones had really decimated the social fabric of growing up in high school and, and things of that nature much, much worse than I think even parents were recognizing at that point. I was looking at the studies coming out about what was happening to teenagers because of that and seeing what it was doing to the environment. I was very worried about that. The second thing I was very worried about, though, was this sort of this coddling kind of mentality that it seemed to creep into public schools or really education and parenting more broadly in our country over the last 10 years. And it was, I thought that combination was very dangerous for young people. If we're going to raise young people to be confident and poised, I thought that was not where I wanted to be. So I really, we actually went driving all throughout the northeastern United States looking for private schools that might have a better option. Mm. Why dance? <laughs> You know, it was interesting. Uh, for me, dance, I, he, he was interested because his friends, like he said, for me, I didn't really care about dance. I knew nothing about dance. But one thing I really liked is that, particularly at this school, the teachers were phenomenal. Um, and that's something I'm, my father actually told me this advice when, he sent, when I went off to college. He says, find the great teachers and take their classes. And I think what he meant by that, and I think it's really true, is that if you have great teachers who have done great things in life and they're bestowing that on young people, that is a very precious thing because they're teaching more than just the subject. They're teaching a methodology, a way of thinking, a way to, to achieve excellence. And I saw the dance teachers at this school that Jesse was going to were that. They were really high caliber people. And I thought, OK, I don't really care if he dances or if he learns or he gets mm -hmm. good, but he's going to learn from these teachers who are excellent. And that's going to be a great experience. So I was really excited about it. I want to come back to you, Jesse, for a moment. I know um, that you said before that basically you had some negative feedback, even from, from the dance instructors, but then you started to put your mind really into becoming a dancer, and you became really um, set on that. So where did this change come from? OK, there was a pretty clear turning point for me, I guess. Uh, it was the spring of 2018, uh, and then my dad, or actually the school, took us to see the Shenyun performance that year. It was that year that I kind of saw the not only the passion of the dancers on stage, but kind of the impact they had on the whole audience. And then coming out of that show, I was, I kind of made up my mind that I wanted to do this in the future, and nobody could stop me from that. And it was mainly because I kind of wanted to inspire people the way I was inspired that night when I watched Shen Yun. So how was it for you then? You sent off your son. How was that transition like for you? 
Well, I mean, I, I, at Northern, when, when he was at the academy in, in Middletown, we were all still together. I mean, it was, it was just a regular day school, private school. But when he made the decision to try out for Fatien uh, Academy and then eventually mm -hmm. move on to the college, that was sort of the big change for us because that was a boarding school situation, and that would mean uh, losing my son. Exactly. <laughs> so it yeah. was, but it was interesting. I, I had a, I had an interesting experience because you know I saw him working so hard to make it into the Fatien that we were, we were sort of so immersed in that task together that it was like almost half a year where it was, you know, he was doing stretching, all these rigorous stretching mm -hmm. exercises, and we were sort of helping him, trying to support him. I remember the day that he, he, he got accepted and we brought him up to campus and I was leaving the campus and I, I just saw a ton of bricks at me. It felt like someone had died. And I, I, was, I was driving home and I, was thinking, I couldn't understand intellectually because I was so focused on this great thing that he just made it into this place. And I just realized sort of like I wasn't ready for emotionally. And it took a long time actually to sort of like get over that. But every single time I got depressed or I was like concerned about it, I realized where he was and mm -hmm. sort of how focused he was on this goal and that was the best thing for him. So dad eventually got over it. So just for context also, so the, we're talking about Feitian College. Being accepted into Feitian College meant for you that your chances to eventually maybe dance on, a, on the stage for Shen Yun got much larger, yeah? Yeah, yeah essentially Feitian College, you can think of it as the training college for Shen Yun. They actually share the same campus in upstate New York. So the mm. Shenyun headquarters and Fatian College and Fatian Academy are all on a, a single 400 acre campus, beautiful campus in upstate New York. Got it, got yeah. it. So when you got accepted, you actually got in finally. Did it, you just mentioned, you touched on it a little bit that you didn't quite know what you were, you were getting yourself into, but what kind of expectations did you even have at that point? How was it in reality? Since the Fatian Academy, uh, the the dance level was a lot higher than that of Milltown, so I was expecting like the training to instantly elevate to Navy SEAL level kind of rigorous <laughs> training. And then I was a bit scared for that because already I was already having trouble uh, keeping up with like the stretching uh, routines we were doing at Middletown. It wasn't obviously it wasn't it wasn't Navy SEAL standards. Um, it was still pretty tough, but um, what I wasn't really expecting was kind of through this training, I developed kind of a bond with the classmates that. Uh, came up to Feitian with me and it's kind of I could almost call them brothers right now right now to this day because we went through we lived together we trained together um, when on like break days we would you know horse around and play around together and mm. it, they kind of just became a family away from home that's wonderful and can you tell me a little bit more about how can we imagine a day for you to be like because you're doing dance training to be a professional dancer and then you have all the school work on top what does this look like for you in a day so it leads to pretty much jam-packed days almost every single day but uh, in the morning is three hours of dance training be it mm -hmm. rehearsal or uh, like taking bar and stuff like that um, there are a lot of dancers that also wake up earlier to do some extra training before like before the rehearsals begin in the morning we call it salgong and then after after lunch in uh, in the afternoon, uh, that's when we do our academic studies, where we learn everything from you know normal subjects you would see in school, like mathematics, science, history. We also learn uh, subjects that are that have that kind of we need on stage, it's like Chinese, Chinese culture, uh, Chinese mm. civilization, stuff like that. And then at night is just more training, more rehearsing. So hearing all this, did you know how this would? be like for Jesse and were you maybe ever worried that this had would have maybe a negative effect on him like in terms of pressure or maybe he would have to grow up too fast? No, I never had that worry. I mean, honestly, again, because he was sort of like this kind of big baseball player when he went out, when he first started training. So my only concern was, would the, would, could he stay? <laughs> you know, <laughs> would this, and, and from either end, would he like it? Like he, me, I, w I had the concern that he just might not like it. And one day he'd call me and say, you know what, Dad, this is not for me. And I, I wouldn't be disappointed because he'd lose out on dance. I'd be disappointed because I knew it was a great environment that would help encourage him and help him grow. Um, so that was, that was the only concern I had, and uh, that call never came. Um, so, yeah, I, it, was, it was fine for me. Okay. <laughs> so when was it really that you took this kind of sigh of relief and felt like, okay, He's fine there. 
this was the right decision. Did you have that yet? <laughs> yeah, I think there's, there's, two, there's two moments that popped to my mind. One is, you know, during the whole COVID period, there was, there was, they had a very strict sort of bubble system and I didn't get to see much. And, and I didn't really see much before the COVID period. So it was kind of, because of all that, it was like a two and a half year period. I think it wasn't until the dance competition in 22 or 21. Mm. So I hadn't seen Jesse perform really on stage. And that was the first time. So, and again, I, I, there was, my son is the baseball player. That's what I was used to. And then when I went to that competition, saw him uh, uh, competing, that was an aha moment. I mean, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. A complete transformation in terms of his physique and his ability to dance. And admittedly, I cried like a baby. <laughs> And that was, that was definitely an aha moment. I think the second moment was, and these are more sort of subtle, but when we, you know, during their off days, uh, once a week they're off and they, you, he'll come home or we'll go out to eat. There was just this change where he was sort of like, I don't know if he knows this, but um, <laughs> All these we would be sort of today. sharing on Chinese culture and things like that. And he's actually giving me pointers because I was learning Chinese at, the point, at one, mm. one point in time. And he was sort of giving me pointers on how you focus on it and what not to worry about. And I was sort of like, it was, it was a bond, it was a level of bonding that I'd never had before. More, you know, it was usually just father-son kind of thing, but this was more like a peer. This is more like someone who had gained a tremendous amount of wisdom and experience where he was, and he's coming back and sharing it with me. And I sort of, you know, he left the room when he was helping me with my Chinese, and he left, and I kind of sat back and I went, wow, mm. things have really changed up there. And I think moments like that really tell me this was absolutely the right decision. Very happy. Tell me more about, because sometimes if you're trying to grasp a culture, right, because culture is as something so intangible, a lot of it is just kind of being left unsaid. It's just there. So tell me more about how you really um, figure that out, grasping the essence of a culture and knowing what, what the essence is. Trying to <laughs> first portray a character that lived 3,000 years ago and then make the audience believe that they're actually in a scene that happened 3,000 years ago. Um, I feel like ultimately it comes down to the values that you want to portray. Like for example, last year I portrayed a general, uh, Zhao Yun. He's very famous for his bravery and his loyalty and his humility. And I feel like, like aside from reading the history of it, aside from knowing the history, um, aside, in, aside from watching like TV shows and reading books on this character, I feel like I tried to almost change my behavior or like try to like incorporate these values into my daily life a little bit more. I try to be more humble. I try to actually like respect my superiors a little bit more. Um, that's kind of hard, hard to put into words, but um, I guess what helps me um, portray these values on stage is to actually kind of live these values in real life. Mm -hmm. You put a lot of work into all this. You studied day in, day out, hours for dance, and then, of course, historically. And then how did it feel like when you actually made it onto the big stage? So I remember the first time uh, the curtain opened to see my first like live audience, and I kind of panicked. <laughs> it was like all that preparation for like a split second went into some remote corner of my brain. I was like, Wow, what's going on? Um, but I guess the more I kind of performed, the more I was able to take what's in my heart and sort of share it with the audience mm. through nonverbal movement. And I guess what that's kind of the beauty of dance is it it kind of transcends the value, the, the barriers of language, and you can use dance to kind of inspire people, to enlighten people, to mm. educate people. By being part of the show, what is it that you would like to give? The audience after you know after a night out watching Shen Yun, what is it that you hope they would take away? Honestly, it's kind of what I took away when I saw Shen Yun that spring in 2018 was just inspire them to be better people, and I feel like this is kind of the ultimate purpose of mm -hmm. art is to again kind of to inspire people to be better. What would you say is the biggest change in him, seeing him growing up now? ever since you sent him to the school? No, not me. Well, he's a lot taller <laughs> no, now. Me. He's a lot taller now. Um, 
Uh, there's a lot of, I don't know if there's one big thing, there's a lot of little things. You know, he has this t-shirt he sometimes wears that says, no, no bad days. <laughs> and I love that. I, mean, it's sort I aspire of, to that. Yeah, it, it sort of encapsulates a spirit that Jesse always kind of had. I mean, he always had this sort of gutsiness to him that I never had at his age when he was a young kid, but it really flourished when he got to Feitian and started with Shen Yun. And that this whole spirit of like, if you're doing great in the day and everything's going well, be productive. If everything's going horribly, learn from it. Fortitude, you know, add some fortitude to your willpower. Power through it. The idea that he embraces those principles and lives them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's these kind of things. That's one example. There's many of them. But it's those kind of things that I think really sort of not only make me proud, but I, I learned from it as well. So up until now, what is it? What do you think about it? What makes you proud? As a parent, look, I... I Myself, actually my whole family, I come from a very educated family. Education has always been a very big deal in my family. And I'd always thought, and that's not just in the classroom. It's sort of like, how do you raise children not to live the life you want, but to give them all the tools to live the life that they want with a reasonably strong moral compass and confidence and poise. I mean, that's a, that's a difficult puzzle to sort of piece together, especially in the world today. And Honestly, I spent a lot of sleepless nights and worries about how to do that properly, you know, as the boys were growing older and older and older. And I think um, when we found Fei Tian and I saw the mission of Fei Tian, that, they're, that they were going to, that they would shape young artists to be not only world-class artists, but I would say world-class people, people who, who, who learn the value of putting others before themselves, learn the value of aspiring to be more compassionate and things of this nature. I mean, that was really an aha moment for me, a major relief. <laughs> the search was over. And I think I'm most proud to just see that he's been able to have this opportunity to mm -hmm. go through that, that, the, the college, to be part of Shen Yun, to be part of this, because that's what I always wished, is he would find something like that. Yeah. yeah. I see. So now, of course, something that I mentioned in the beginning of the show mm -hmm. um, is that you have become a board member of Fatian College. And you said that Jesse had something to do with it. So tell me more how that uh, came to be. Oh, for me, it was really simple. I mean, he had gone up and started with the, with, with the academy and then the college, and I just saw what a wonderful institution it was. And so I became friends with the chairman of the board. And when they had an opening, I said, hey, I would love to get involved in this. This is what I've been searching for my whole life as a parent. Can I help? And, mm -hmm. and I, was, I was elected to the Board of Trustees, and now I help with the college, and I help grow it. And, and so I sort of followed him. Uh, I saw what happened to him, and I said, I want to be part of this. So what kind of role would you say now that Shin Yun has in your life? It gave me a, it gave me a purpose. Like before, I, I didn't really know what I was, where I was going to go in life. But I guess what Shin Yun did for me was it gave me a purpose in life, not just like superficially, like career-wise, it also gave me kind of like a, a moral standard that I have to meet every single day and kind of be the best person, best artist that I can be. Hmm. Well, I think you guys really came a long way, and especially you with all this, like I said, um, with the drive that you have. And going from baseball prayer, you said you tried to keep up with stretching up until now as a principal dancer. So Jesse Browdy, Levi Browdy, I really appreciate your time today. And on that note, if you want to learn more about Shen Yun, head to shenyun.com, and we will be back in a minute, so stay with us.